All right. All righty. Good morning. Welcome to another edition of Coffee with Tim. All right. This morning, I'm going to redo the dark image, the dark version. I am again in the garage, and I have a better set today. Um, here we go. Let me get this adjusted and get my coffee cup, which I have right here. And I have my I my tablet sitting on a Workmate 200, which you can purchase for about 20 bucks if you want it. Coming up real soon because I have two, and I put one in storage and one's for sale. It's a wonderful tool. And uh, so I'm out here in the garage. I did that the dark version a couple weeks ago, and uh, the, the lighting was horrible. So I'm trying to correct that. Um, our house is virtually empty because uh, we sold it. <laughs> we sold it. The first, uh, we went on MLS on last Coffee with Tim Day, which today is. And by Monday, I have, we had five offers, all of which were above our asking price. Exceedingly, abundantly above all that we could ask or think. And so we ended up uh, sort. It was hard to sort through all the offers. There was uh, unique things about all of them. And what caught us off guard is that each potential buyer submitted a personal letter, either by them or by the realtor on their behalf, describing the, the uh, couple or person, couple, who wanted to buy it, their motivation, their, their history, and how much they loved our house. And the, one of the funny things was they loved how we decorated it, even though almost everything was gone. <laughs> they must have been talking about the uh, redesign I did when I did the kitchen and bathrooms, the tile choices and stuff. In any case, uh, we had to pick, and we picked one. And we didn't pick the highest offer, and we didn't pick the one with the most net profit for us. But um, it was difficult, and we felt... Felt for though because we started liking the people, you know. Well, I like this person better than that person. That's it's hard, and then you say no to people's dreams. And then uh, we did ask the, the second. We narrowed it down to two. I picked the one of the two, and then we asked the number two person couple to stay in a backup position just in case we had problems with the first one. And the realtor answered us and said we'd be happy to be in a backup position, my client's wife cried when she heard that she didn't get the house. So that was hard. It was heartbreaking a little bit. But bottom line, Laura has provided for us and we have uh, sold our house, which is making everything really, really real to us right now. We have, uh, we were at church last week and we realized we only had two more Sundays to worship with Valley View. And we had home group on Tuesday, and we had two more home groups. Now we only have one, one more home group before we go. And so it's getting very real to us, the decisions that we've made and the path that we're on. And one of the things that you can pray for us about is we have to figure out what we're going to do for a physical residence outside of Washoe County. Because we don't want to have to come back and smog the car. You know, we want to... We want to maintain our uh, Nevada driver's licenses and our car registration, but we have to have a physical address, not just a tip, temporary place we stayed for a month or whatever, but a per fairly permanent physical address that we can claim as ours, but it's outside of Washoe County, so we don't have to come back and smog the car. So there's lots of d uh, decisions and unknowns uh, yet to be played out. You know, we're thinking about buying a little piece of property in rural Nevada that we would be able to park the RV on and call it home. But I'm not sure if that's what we're going to do or not. In any case, good morning. Hope everybody else out there is doing well. Um, so this morning, I got so much stuff in my mind. And uh, I want to give a shout out to Pastor Greg. He was the pastor of one of my old churches I went to. And I, I'm out here in the garage and I'm finding tools. And I, I found this tool. Those of you who, who recognize tools would know this is a pair of channel lock pliers. 
And Pastor Greg always talked about him or the him being a, a pair of Chandelock pliers in the Lord's toolbox. Because you can do almost anything with a pair of Chandelock pliers, he would say. He could pull weeds with a pair of Chandelock pliers. He could fix almost anything with Chandelock pliers. They're very uh, adaptable to multiple uses. And the, uh, the principle he was trying to teach is you had to be uh, flexible to do the thing the Lord pro provides you to do and for him to use you in a certain way at a certain point in time, certain circumstance, not to be too specialized of a tool that you can't be used for something else, you know. I can say the same thing about a flathead screwdriver, too. I can use a flathead screwdriver, and I do, for for lots of purposes, you know. Maybe not what it's intended to, but it will accomplish the, my purpose. So I uh, just wanted to throw that out because I found my pair of channel like pliers. And so shout out, Greg. Thank you for that lesson. And it, uh, it's still ringing in my ears. I gotta blow my nose. Oh my goodness. Okay. So, um, Lord, just uh, fill me up, Lord, and overflow. Thank you, Lord. Next topic today is. Okay, I've never been a farmer, but I know a little bit about farming. I've never been a lot of things. I know a little bit about a lot of things. I have a little bit of skill in lots of different areas. You know, I'm kind of a jack of many trades. You can call me Jack. Just don't, just don't call me late for dinner, okay? So, um, I don't know much about fishing. Although I did fish with my dad in the Truckee River. And I don't know much about boating, although I've been in a boat. But I do know this about a boat, okay? A boat leaves a wake. A power boat, even a sailboat, leaves a little bit of a wake. So you can see behind the wake. You can see uh, stuff that's uh, near the surface of the water being churned up. and Kind of like a, uh, when you plow a field. That, Like I said, I've never been a farmer, but I suspect when you plow a field... Things that are just under the surface get pulled up, and you can see things that you wouldn't have seen before. So, in our life, if you looked behind yourself, you could see your wake, what's, what's been churned up by your life as you went through it, and what's come to surface. And so you look back, and you can see Hopefully, you can see a mostly clear, beautiful, uh, serene, peaceful way, clean. But I, from time to time, I look back, and I'm not so sure that I see things. What's in my path? Where have I been? What's in my path? I see things that aren't too pretty sometimes, and it distresses me. It really distresses me, because it's, it's failure. It's broken relationships. You see them behind you. <clears throat> undone things, you see them behind you. Broken promises, you see them behind you. And uh, the idea is that you want to go through life and hurt as few people as possible, make as few mistakes as possible, uh, keep as many promises as possible, so that behind you, you don't have a bunch of stuff. It's, you know, unfinished stuff, broken things that you need to go back and try to fix. I came across a broken thing just this last week, you know. It's a relationship I have with my oldest son. And we sat down and we went to have lunch for a couple, three hours. I went over to his house. I hadn't seen him for a good long time. And I went to his house and I told him I was leaving and I wanted to say goodbye. And I brought him a, a little gift of a couple things from the house that I thought would be a memory for him. Because I didn't want to just disappear. So I was forced to look at this piece of uh, stuff from my past and my wake. And uh, I wasn't pleased with it. Uh, I wish I could sit here and tell you everything's fine now. But it's not. It's not fine. It was good to see him. It was good to see my son. 
but everything's not fine. So I'll have to deal with that, and that's the hard part now. I have to deal with the fact that things aren't fine. Sometimes you can break things so much you can't fix them, you know, or it's very hard to fix. But I remind myself things that are impossible with men are possible with God. So I just want to talk to you about the wake. Take a look at your wake. And as you're living your life, be careful what you're doing because you're going to create something behind you, you know. Try to live out the perfect law of love that God calls us to into your relationships. Try to keep your promises. Try to uh, mend any broken things before they get too broken. Minimize the collateral damages and things that you have without compromising your walk. And it's, it's not easy. There's no, I mean, there's, there's a book. But there's no book on some of these circumstances that come up in life. People, the way people make decisions and things that happen, uh, sometimes they are kind of unique, and it's hard. Uh, you got multiple uh, Bible principles that might apply to the circumstance, and how do you sort them? How do you, which one do you apply, and how do you, how do you balance them all? There's, it's not easy. Some of these things that the people do, and that you have to make a decision on how you're going to react to. But I would suggest that. Uh, the first reaction should be love. That should be the, the driving one. And I'm not, uh, you know, love is, the, is the, the most important thing that Paul says. Jesus talked about it a lot. John talked about it a lot. Uh, now by the faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. And if you don't love your brother, how can you love God? So love is, 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 is probably the kingpin of, of all the things that we need to be doing. But love is also the hardest. And love isn't wussy. Love isn't just passive. Love isn't just accepting. Love is tough. Love is, there's a tough love where sometimes you have to, to take a stand that doesn't appear on the surface to be a loving stance but it really is and it's hard to sort that out it really is you know i'm sure glad god knows what he's doing because i don't know what i'm doing sometimes so i don't know just wanted to talk about that for a minute consider your own life consider the wake behind you and maybe there's things that you need to take care of Maybe there's things you need to go back and say, hey, I screwed that up. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Um, well, you and the Lord worked that out. But it's just an encouragement. Just be careful what you, choices you make, your reactions you do, because it's going to make an effect and it's going to be in your wake behind you. All right? All right. Now, my verse of the day, I want to talk about this because it was interesting to me. The things the Lord shows me sometimes, like, well, that's pretty cool. <laughs> you know, thank you, Lord. <laughs> so I'm in First Peter chapter 3, verse 12, and this is out of the Tree of Life version, which is kind of a Jewish uh, inflection to it, and uh, you'll hear it. <clears throat> it says this, For the eyes of Adonai are on the righteous, and his ears open to their prayer. But the face of Adonai is against those who do evil. So I was just thinking about that for just a minute. And it's always a good thing to do. Think about God's word, right? Get your coffee. You know, someday I'll have to show you how I make coffee. I, I use a drip system here. But in the, in the RV, we have a percolator, which is a little bit of a different flavor, a little bit of a different deal. And I, we have a, a grinder, right? We buy the, the whole beans and uh, keep them nice and fresh. We don't refrigerate them. And uh, grind our, our beans every morning. I do when I make coffee. And uh, we should probably get better water. You know, I probably should get some some better water because that makes a difference too but we just use tap water for now anyway i just opened a can of beans this morning and uh, 
so they're really really fresh and I, now you can a bag of beans fresh 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 beans and uh, so there's a little bit of a new flavor to it and it's really good this morning <laughs> it's really good all right so for the eyes of Ed and I are on the righteous and so my eyes are drawn my thoughts are drawn to the to, to the three things that are talked about the eyes the ears and the face the three pieces of, of Adonai, of God, are descriptors. For the eyes of Adonai are on the righteous. So he's watching the righteous. He's looking at them. Why is Adonai looking at the righteous? What is, what is, the, what is the meaning of that? What's the purpose of that? Uh, and I think, I think knowing my God the way I've come to learn about him, come to know him as he's watching them on the one hand uh, you watch your kids and you watch them first so that they're safe that they're not gonna stumble and that there's dangers all around them so you watch them with care that you don't want them to get hurt you don't want them to, to fall get bit by a snake run over by a car whatever it is so, so on the one hand you watch them in a care with a, a sense of care for them because you love them, right? You love your kids. You're responsible for your kids, even if you don't love them. And you want them to be safe. You want them to, to be okay. So on the one hand, there's a caring. The eyes of care are on the righteous. I think it's more than that. I think there's a sense of enjoyment and pride almost. A, a sense of, of rejoicing at how they're living. The righteous are... are Mostly doing things right, right? They're not perfect. This is say the eyes are and I are on the perfect, but they're on the righteous. So the ones who are trying to do what is right in the sight of Adonai are pleasing to him, and he gets pleasure out of watching them make those actions of love and righteousness, right? Care and rejoicing. You look at what pleases you, right? Your eyes are drawn to what pleases you. Unfortunately, that's uh, perverted by the sin in the world. But nonetheless, uh, you want to see things that please you. The righteous please God by the way they live. It's a holy thing. So uh, on the one hand, I see that. Uh, care and pleasure that God gets from his righteous ones. And then it says his ears. His ears. It says his ears. Yeah, like you don't know what eyes and ears are. Let me show you. Okay, these are eyes and these are ears. Okay, <laughs> wonderful. And his ears are open, open to their prayer. He's listening. He's listening. And it applies to me a willingness to respond. Okay? I want. I want to hear what you're saying. I want to make some action uh, to respond to you. As opposed to, I can't hear what you're saying, dude. <laughs> Your life is so dirty, I can't hear what you're saying. No, he's listening. He wants to respond with uh, blessing. Uh, so, this is the righteous. We're righteous by faith, but we're also living righteously. And I think we're talking about the ones who are actually practicing living righteously here. The eyes and the ears. But the face, there's the face, okay, that face, what a beautiful face. The face of Adonai is against those who do evil. So you have two people contrasted, the righteous and the evil. And the eyes and the ears are good toward the righteous. But the face is against those who do evil. You ever seen a mad face? My wife gives me the look, right? I have a look I give when I'm upset, when I'm displeased, when I'm trying to communicate. Michael Williams has a look. <laughs> Hi, Michael. Uh, I try to communicate my emotion, my thoughts, through my countenance, my face. I think that's part of it. You don't want to see God's mad face, do you? Do you want to see Adonai's upset face? 
I don't. I don't. I don't want to see that face. I want to see the face of pleasure, of rejoicing. I want to, not that I'll ever hear these words, but I want to hear. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. You know, Jesus got those words. Those are great words. And the countenance that the father must have toward his son is just amazing. It's count us toward us because uh, at the end of our day, we're either accepted by him because of Christ, and therefore all the blessings of Christ are ours, or we're, we're going to have the angry face and we're going to fry. Okay? I don't want to fry. I've given myself to Christ 40 something years ago, and I expect to, to have the full acceptance that comes. As a result of his actions for me, his death, his burial, his resurrection, for me, cover my sin. Seek and save that which is lost. I was lost. The face, you know, uh, the face also, I think it implies determination. I'm not, I am not going to put up with that. I'm going to stop that. I am against that. So it's not just a, a the stern warning look or an angry look. It's a, I have determined to put an end to that behavior. Uh, it's, it's not a place you want to be, right? It's, I, I don't want to be in, in that place from anybody, but especially Adonai, because that's the one I have to give an answer to. That's the one I'm created for. You know, my greatest pleasure in my life is when I please my creator. When I'm in right relationship, doing right things uh, in fellowship with my creator. That's my greatest joy. That's my greatest fulfillment. <clears throat> but people don't seem to understand that. They think their greatest fulfillment is making them, their flesh happy. You know, alcohol or sex or whatever they want to put in there. You know, pride, whatever they're going to put in that flesh to make themselves feel good. No, the, the source of feeling good about yourself is when you're pleasing the one who made you. Right? That's pretty simple. Pretty simple. Anyway, that's my verse of the day. And it was just the thing that just popped. It's just, I hope that's some use to you. I hope that encourages you. I hope that drives you on. Okay, my time's about up. This next couple of weeks is going to be insane. Uh, we have garage sales coming. We got trips to the storage unit coming. We got little details. Inspectors are coming over to the house. There's last minute little things to to take care of. Uh, so it's not just a waiting. There's still a finishing. There's a lot of finishing to do. Uh, got all my emails updated with uh, everybody. I hope. And, and I, what's next? I don't know. I got. I still got more purging. Lots of purging to do. So we appreciate your prayers because there's a lot of us things that we're not sure about. And and just stepping out of faith, it's really stepping out of faith because there's a, still a piece of doubt. Are we doing something stupid? Because you know I like it here. I love my home. I love these things. And so to give them up because you feel like that's might be the better path for you to please God, to serve God. It's like, man, that's hard. It's hard. I'm serving God here. I was working in the church here. But this is full time. So we would appreciate your prayers, especially as we go through this uh, insane transition. You know, insane transition. And uh, I'm getting closer and closer to my wife lately. It's been, it's been really good for us. So let me give you a blessing today. Father God, I pray for for us, because I, I am with my listeners, and I pray, Father, for something you help us remember that we are uh, multi-use tools, and to be aware of the need of the moment, and be flexible uh, to pull a weed, as Pastor Greg taught me, or do the thing, the little thing that maybe isn't doesn't even look like ministry. But it is. It's an act of love and service to you to meet the need of another. So I pray, Father, that, that we would be sensitive and aware of the little things that we can do today. 
Thank you, Father, that your eyes are upon the righteous. Uh, Lord, that you're going to you're going to guard us from those snakes, from the, the, the rake that we might step on, or uh, the car that's coming, that you're taking care of us because you love us. You are for us, and we can count on you. We want to listen to your voice, and we want to learn your instructions so we don't do stupid things. But we want to go out there and, and be righteous, doing righteous things. And uh, that brings you pleasure, Lord. The fact that you get pleasure out of your creation when your creation works in harmony with you, that's really cool. Thank you, Lord, for that. And your ears are open to our prayer to the righteous. Lord God, you know our need before we even ask. Pray your blessing upon us. Pray your care. Pray you'd be pleased with how we live. We pray you'd fill us with your spirit, with knowledge and understanding, with wisdom. I pray, Father, for our wakes. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive me for the broken things in my wake and show me what I can fix. And more, and especially help me not make more junk as I go forward in the present. The present makes junk in the past. I want to have a clean past. Help me, Lord, to show me what I can do. Thank you, Lord. You are a good God to us. I never want to see your angry face. Lord. I never want to see your look. So, I pray you give me a heart to just stay true and close with you. Bless my listeners today, Lord. Bless them. Uh, just whatever they're doing today, that they would walk with you and sense your presence this day. Thank you for being good to us. So, coffee heads, thank you for the another uh, coffee with Tim, for hanging in there with me, and uh, stay tuned. We're going to have lots of updates. I intend to continue uh, for the time being. Coffee with Tim, even as we leave and hit the road, and you get an update of where we're at. We might have to change coffee with Tim day though. So we'll see. Anyway, God bless you, and we'll talk to you, uh, Lord willing, next week. And that's all. Uh, oh.